Hey everybody, it's Peggy. I'm back again with another video and today I am talking about my last video. No, I'm not, I'm going to be making stuff for you today, don't worry. So my last video I made this guy is a nice little decorative pillow. I made it in the 10 inch size because I wanted to sample the technique, see what I think of it. And I didn't particularly like the technique that I was using for flat projects. You'll have to go watch the video. Hopefully I'll remember to include a link up here somewhere and you'll be able to go check it out on how to make this pillow. It's a really, really nice pillow. It's really fluffy, really simple and easy to make and not difficult at all. But there was a couple of, th a couple of things that I still thought maybe I could do better. And I did. I did. I did, I did. I made myself not one, but two nice fluffy pillows. You will need for this project a minimum of 18 by 18 inch piece of batting or whatever size works for you. This is a really simple project and it's really easy to scale up or scale down to whatever size you want. Okay, coughing fit is over. It's so dry in here. Okay, this is really easy to scale up or down to whatever size you want. You will need an 18 by 8. My, this pattern is going to make a 16 by 16 inch pillow. So I'm going to start with an 18 by 18 inch piece of fabric. And that is a piece of batting, cotton batting of your choice. And I'm going to set this aside for the moment. You are also going to need four nine inch by nine inch. Did I not cut these yet? I did not cut these yet. You are going to need, now these are 10 inch by 10 inch, which is fine. So I'm going to get out one of my schmancy rulers if I can remember where I put it. Ooh, this is easy. I've got this guy. Now, if you want a bigger pillow, just start with a bigger piece. The rule of thumb on this one is the sewing technique that I'm going to use is going to require half inch seams, which means that you're going to lose a half an inch on this side and a half an inch on this side. That's an inch, right? So if you want this to be 10 inch by 10, if you want a 20 inch by 20 inch pillow, you need 11 inch by 11 inch pieces so that you have your seam allowance to lose. So whatever size you want your pillow to be. So if I want this to be nine by nine, I'll need a 10 by 10. If I need it and up or down, whatever works best for you. So I am going to start with two nine inch. Actually, this is a nine and a half inch ruler. And I know I over, I know I cut my um, interfacing just a little on the big side. Actually, I'll do this. I'll do this the right size. No, I won't screw that. I don't have to. Okay. Your pillow is going to be nine by nine. My ruler is nine and a half by nine and a half, and I'm just not going to fight with it today. That extra inch, nine and a half by nine and a half means I'm going to get eight and a half by eight and a half. Eight and eight is 16, plus the half inch plus half inch is 17. I'll get a 17 inch pillow. I will say math for this stuff can be, figuring out your sizes can be, have its annoyances. This I'm making for my lovely, lovely wife. So I'm getting over my aversion to pink for a day to make this for her. I'm just cutting both pieces at the same time. There's a lot of wiggle room and forgiveness here. So precision, you, okay. Precision is important for a lot of projects. You definitely don't want to have pieces that are too far under. Whoops. I say as I cut completely off in a V, um, sometimes you can cut some, what do people call them? Stack them and whack them or something. There's, there's some cute terms that people use when they're stacking up fabrics. This is one that you can fabric up, fabric up, stack up. You don't need that kind of precision. So you can get away with it that way. Um, and again, I'm just going for the extra half inch because it just happens to be the size of my ruler and then I don't have to mess around. So I could have just lied to you guys and said I was doing nine inch by nine inch, but I don't want to lie to anybody. There we go. I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of the, of the feeling sparing white lie. Like when grandma says, do I look pretty in this ugly ass nasty dress? And you say, oh my God, grandma, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Maybe, you know, burlap sack to finish the look and hide that dress, but you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you the brutal truth. Anyway, anyway, I'm babbling. Okay. This is really simple. This is actually a pretty simple, pretty quick project. So put your first piece down. I've got a slightly bigger piece. 
I set it up to get it out of the way. I have got such a mess in here today, it's disgusting. And I don't care. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. Okay. I am cheating because some types of batting do really well at holding a fabric in place without having to do anything with it. What you can also do is give a little shot, and I mean a little shot, don't go crazy. Because you're using bigger pieces, you can also pin them and just give a little shot of 505 spray. It is a temporary adhesive that just goes on between the two layers. Make sure you're not putting on too much. There is such a thing as too much with this adhesive. Or you can just rely on the batting itself. So I'm just laying out my fabric. Make sure it's touching. It can overlap slightly, but not by more than a quarter of an inch. Actually, well, try not to overlap it. Try not to overlap it at all, but if it does overlap ever so slightly, you don't have to panic. Get your next piece on, do that. I'm actually gonna pin these. I think, okay, what happened here? Why is that off the end? It shouldn't be. Oh. Oh, right, because I went nine and a half. Okay. 505 spray. I fucked this up already, but that's okay. 505 spray is peelable. When you are putting it on batting, though, it will leave, it will take off little bits of the batting. So just be careful of that when you have, if slash when you have to move things around. So I'm just going to reposition. I love, I love, love, love how some of these battings are really staticky because then you have tons of options. Anyway, line it all up. Line it all up. Bring this in. It is okay if your batting goes off the edge just by the tiniest bit. It really is because the way that you're going to sew this later isn't going to matter. It looks like I'm going to be doing, I forgot to take that into consideration, so I'm not going to get the full benefit of a nine and a half inch, but that's okay. I don't care. So we're almost ready to sew. This is, this is the coolest thing. I love how this turned, I love how these pillows that I made turned out, the black and red ones. So this is going to be a, this is uh this is the, the theme, fa this is the theme fabric from Lisa's channel. And this is just a lovely shade of pink that I know she happens to like. Okay. So we're, we're lined up neatly and nicely. We're lined up neatly and nicely. Pin it, clip it, do whatever you need to, to be confident that it's being held into place. I'm going to grab some pins. Like I said, I am really relying on the, I am, I am relying on the, um, the, the static cling of the batting. It's winter time here. So static is static. The static is so bad in the air right now that every now and again, you'll touch something on a little crack. <laughs> you ever get that snap crackle pop? Okay. I'm going to take this broken pin and put it aside and throw it away in a minute. By the way, if you're throwing away, if you're throwing away your sewing pins, because this one here, the, uh, I was just about to go push it in and the end just came right off. Treat this like you would any sharps. Um, if you, if you can treat it like you would a sharps, like, and put it in a sharps container, which we have a diabetic dog. So we happen to have a sharps container in the house, but, um, be careful disposing of your pins because you can really freak people out, especially and especially if you're in a, in a neighborhood where somebody has to actually physically handle your bags. So I'm going to be right back while I go get, go get rid of that. Okay, back. Okay, so I'm really taking advantage of the static. I'm really, really, really taking advantage of the static cling that exists in my house right now. So I'm just pinning lightly and I'm good to go. If you really are concerned, then you can just peel these up, leave it pinned, peel these up. I've already, I've already partly, well, I'll take it up anyway. Do that. Take your 505. There, that's it. It's already pinned, so I just have to roll it back into place. Tack it down, roll it back into place. Use extra pins, do whatever you need to do. If this shifts a little bit, you don't have to care as long as it's not shifting more than about a quarter of an inch. Okay. We are almost ready. Now I'm going to, I've got everything ready to go over here. I'm going to get my shit out of the way. There's a couple of ways you can do this and I'm just doing it the laziest possible way because I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the exact same way I did it 
when I was making the black and red pillows yesterday. Do to do, do. So I'm going to just fold this in half, lining up the fabrics. I'm going to come in here, take a quick look. I'm going to come in here and take a quick look and make sure that these are folded in half. I'm going to trust that it, fabrics love to fall into place if you just give them the opportunity to fall into place. So trust that everything fell into place the way that you want it to. Do, 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 do. Fold it in half. Now this is, this is, this is regular, the batting that I'm using right now, it really won't take a seam even if I do iron it, so I'm not going to. If you have one that will take a seam and you want to iron it to get a more solid seam, then by all means knock yourself out. That's kind of a decision that you're going to have to make based on what you're doing. And also if this is, if you have the kind that is adhesive and you can just iron it down, do that. I am cutting corners and doing it this way. So now I'm just going to come up here. This is a bit of a trust exercise because you have to trust that all that fabric folded nicely and smoothly into your corners. Half inch seam all the way down. I'm starting away from the edge because I already know for a fact that, I, that my batting goes past the edge. I didn't bother with back stitching because I was past the edge anyway and it won't matter. Half inch seam all the way down. Take your time. Try and make it as straight as possible. This is actually a super quick project so you guys are just going to love this. Okay, double check. Something feels a little thick. Nope, that was just the... Batting can be a pain in the ass to sew through, especially when you're doing it into two layers. So if you don't think you've got a machine that can handle this layer, if, if you don't think that your sewing machine can handle this, then you may want to consider, and this is what I did as a test earlier, you may want to consider taking a piece of, a piece of just a small piece, it doesn't have to be huge, just, just, you know, just like a piece like that, doesn't have to be huge. Take a small piece of batting and a piece of fabric, fold the whole works in half with the batting on the outside, just a two inch piece, run it through your machine and make sure the machine can handle it. That's, I'm not showing that step because that's the step I already did to test everything. Okay, so I went for a three eighths inch. I went, I was gonna go for a quarter inch um, cut you now have to be able to open this up, so you have to trim off the excess. I have a half inch seam, but I'm gonna run my ruler right out. So my ruler is sitting at about three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna do an extra wide seam because I noticed that it felt a lot less bulky. Take your time, don't forget that those pins are still there. So make sure you're not jabbing yourself as you move things around. I've got a fairly, I'm sitting, I'm sitting at my, I've got a bigger table to the back, but the camera sets up better at this table. So I'm sitting at a fairly small table Make sure you're not doing anything to yourself. Okay. Now, moment of truth, did it so where I wanted it to. If you're relying on the static method, you're gonna have to be careful. You just take your time before you open this up and look at that. First seam is in there beautifully. It's all the way across. These are, these are still, these pieces here are still not done yet, but this caught everything all the way down. It's a nice straight seam. We're good to go. Now, you do need to flip it back over and you can check your seam. You can leave it sandwiched and just check your seam by like peeking in any, any way that you want to do. Just check and make sure your seam went where you want it to. 505 spray is still holding beautifully. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go like that. I am just going to finger press this. Now on the other one, on the mini pillow that I did, if anybody is comparing the two videos, on the mini pillow that I did, I stopped and ironed these seams, but this, like I said, the batting won't really take a seam to begin with, so I'm just doing my best. I'm doing my best and not worrying, worrying about it. If you are deeply, deeply concerned and really feel like you have to have these properly out, then you can, you, there's plenty of things that you can do to um, seal it down. You can, you can put another little layer of 505 and then open it back up, hold it that way, but I found that it didn't matter. I found that it really didn't matter, basically, basically. Okay, so I'm supposed to be comparing the two. So basically on this little pillow, I keep pointing at it and it's over here. On this guy, on this guy, I was using a fusible fleece, which gives me a different, slightly different texture, but because it's a smaller pillow, it's really, um, this, is a, this actually turned out really nice. I really, really, really liked the pillow. On the placemats, the fusible fleece, 
and gave it enough of a stiffness that I could really, really, really feel the seams even from the front in a way that I just wasn't 100% happy with. So that's, what, that's where that came from. So get it as best you can. Don't agonize. Get it open. Open it up. This is going to be much easier. It's much easier to find your center because you're going to have pink, pink, white, white. So, and you're going to see, you're going to see where the two, it, it's our, the fabrics, because there's, because they're different fabrics, you're going to see that split. So just line that up. Obviously take your time, make sure the rest is lining up. Don't just trust this. Don't, don't just trust the center and then fold it in half best you can line, fold it in half, line it up the best you can. Take your time. Don't forget you've got a seam, you've got a seam, you've got a seam line up here now. So you can line everything up. You're putting in a half inch seam. So if something seems like it's a tiny bit off, you can be generous and go, no, oh, this is okay. Okay. Done. Don't forget. Don't forget this looks off at the top because I did use a bigger piece of batting that I'll be trimming back as I go. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Because you don't always have to trim every last thing right up front. Okay, we're back over here again. Do, 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 do. Anyway, anyway, I really, really, really liked how that pillow turned out. I liked how these pillows turned out. The funny thing is that I'm probably going to go back and do a combination of the fusible fleece. I don't have any more fusible fleece. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm doing it in these, but I also want a really soft pillow. So that's why I'm doing the regular, regular, regular fleece. So off to the end we go. I'm actually almost done. Well, I'm not almost done. Something's beeping. Something in my house just beeped. I have no idea what it was. Okay. So back, we're back, we're back over here. Ah, where'd you guys go? Jeez. Okay, we're back over here. You can cut these with scissors. If you sometimes these areas here, like I'm gonna have to go over this twice. Sometimes where you've got all these extra layers because of a crease, it can be a pain in the ass. So you can cut these with scissors if you want. Just remember. You can cut these with scissors, scissors if you want. I think you will have an easier time of it if you are making um, a wider seam allowance, but you don't have to. Okay, moment of truth. Drum roll, please. Let's open this up. Da -da 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 -da. And look at that. Look at that. Look how perfectly that lined up. Now I'm not gonna. I'm never. I'm not gonna make a quilt out of this. You might even be able to see it. See how puffed up. You might be able to see it. This is this is pretty puffed up. You definitely want something behind it. Now, I've already had a few suggestions for really good things that you can do with it. So that's fine. I'm gonna take out all the pins. For good or for bad, these pins need to come out because I have to now put the back on. Oh, I didn't cut it back. Okay, I didn't get a back ready for this. I didn't do anything for the back yet, and that's fine. So again, if you are using a fuse, if you are using a fusible fleece product, this has already been ironed down, and you wouldn't have had to use the pins in the first place. I did put some 505 spray, so this isn't really going to go anywhere. I'm going to come up the side here and just trim this. I'm only trimming off the, uh, I'm only tr trimming off the batting right now. Um, just not because I need the batting off. I need the batting off of my dog, though. Mind you, he's just laying down underneath there, going, yeah, "It's okay. You can just, you can just throw stuff on me. I don't mind." I'm just taking off the worst of the batting to make it easier to deal with when I'm ready to put the pillow together. Okay. So, did I not do I did not do a back. I wasn't very smart. I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I started talking and then the uh, camera turned off so I did something wrong. So, I've got my backing fabric here. Pretty sides together, put them like that. I just didn't want to separate it all over again. So just take your time. And this, by the way, if you are looking for that project that you want to do a project, I've got some, I got some um, 
salvage here, but it's not going to show up, so I'm just leaving it. If you want a project that you can get started on, this is actually a this is actually a surprisingly easy project because it's very very forgiving. Because if you make a mistake and something's a little wonky here, it's going to be filled full of stuffing and you're not going to notice it. So pin every pin pin through everything. I will say that batting likes to move. If you do have a walking foot and you know how to use it, then that is something to think about. Okay. Did I bring over the wrong one? I brought over the right one. Okay. Okay. So. This is pretty easy. Now I am going to grab my biggest honkin ruler. It's the only honkin ruler that's big enough. And I'm going to line up my ruler. Now you can line up a regular ruler. Let's see if I can do this with a regular ruler because that is okay and it is forgiving. Let's do the regular ruler. Let's do my little four inch ruler. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to come out here. You're going to grab whatever your favorite marking thing is. And in this case, I'm going to come out and I'm going to go, how wide, how big can I make this, this pillow? I can go to almost, but not quite eight and a half inches because of the way the batting and everything is. Double check, double check your measurements. Don't worry if you're losing a quarter inch here or a bit of a bit of space here. Oh, that is sewn down. Okay. So, oh, that's why I'm opening at the wrong spot. That goes that way. Take your time. Yep, this goes to eight and a half inches just fine. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at where your seams are and you're going to get in here. Let me see if I can get you guys in here a little bit better. You're going to get in here and you're going to put your ruler, you're going to put your ruler line right on that seam. Okay. Not, not, not somewhere in here. You're going to put the grid lines on your ruler. You're going to put your grid, you're going to put your eight inch grid and you're going to double check. Yeah, I'm just going to do a 16 inch pillow after all. You're going to put your eight inch grid exactly on that line. Let's back out again so you can guys see what's going on. You're going to put your eight inch grid exactly on that line and then you're going to mark it. You're going to go slow. You're going to go careful and you're going to, some people like to cut these and then, um, and then sew with their, with their, um, with their seam allowances. And if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to cut and then sew, then cut at eight and a half inches. I'm cutting at eight inches because that's exactly where I'm going to put my, um, stitch line. So I'm going to put an eight inch line here. I'm going to go, I'm going to flip my ruler just so I'm looking at exactly the number eight and don't screw up on my math. Don't worry about doing that. Anything that you've got to do to get this right is what you got to do. Anybody who tells you going, that you're doing it wrong can, well, they cannot have a pillow from you. That's what they cannot. That's what they can do. They can find someplace else to get a pillow. Okay. Eight inch here. And like I said, if you're the kind that cuts first and then sews, then cut at eight and a half inches. Do, 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 do. I'm doing this the long way around just so that you guys, because I keep, I keep defaulting to bringing out the big fancy toys and not everybody has the space or the time for the big fancy toys. Also keep in mind, if things are not exactly perfect the very first time, everything's been pinned, so I can just give it a spin. Pin first, then measure, then mark. Open up this seam. Okay. Get your ruler right on there. And you can be off. You, you can have your ruler all the way down here making your 8-inch line. As a matter of fact, I'll get a better square. I will get a better square if I slide this ruler all the way down to that first line. So now I'm lining this line up with the seam line this line up with the, with the line I've already drawn in and there's another eight inch line there. And, 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 and because it's already lined up with everything, I can two fingers on the ruler, one thumb on the, on the fat, on the material. So does it move? Batting loves to shift. Batting loves to shift around while you're working with it. So take your time, go slow. You can keep going on this side. Then you, you don't have to flip your ruler. I just do it so that I don't have to think. <laughs> it's like eight inches. Okay, there's the eight. One, two, three. Yep. And now I've got that line going. 
Don't worry about the pin. You're not hurting yourself. I'm making some pretty dark lines so that you guys can see them. Come all the way around to this side. All the way around to this side. If you um, if you go here, I don't know if it's still on the yeah. If you if you go, you can go up. You can go up into this camp. Well, you can go up into this corner. Okay, you can go up into this corner because you're going to line up your eight line there. The bottom of your ruler is here, and then that is there. So now you can do that. Once you have the first couple, once you have your first couple of lines down at and and have confirmed that they're at the right dimensions, it gets pretty flexible how you can mark your lines. So your eight inch line goes there. Okay, I'm leaving that corner for a second because I'm gonna come back and do it from here. I like to do, I like my, I like my measuring to be as precision as possible. Or rather my marking. I like my marking to be, I like, I like this part to be as precision as possible when I'm going because then, because sometimes things shift. If I'm already screwing around and things are shifting, then if things, further shift, I'll have an even more obvious issue going on. Did I say that right? Anyway, so now I am here. I'm gonna flip my ruler around so I don't have to do any. I'm already thinking about the math too much, so I'm just gonna do that so I can think about at least so I'm lining up on my eight inch line on my ruler is here, right along the, the sew line. I'm off the camera a little tiny bit here. So my eight inch line is here right along the sewn line. The edge of the ruler is lining up with that nice line that I've already made. And by the way, by the way, there's no rule that says you have to use really dark lines. I'm using a heat erase, I'm using a heat erase pen so I can just zap it and it'll come off. Some people use very, very light colors. Some people just use a pencil. Use whatever marking method. Oops, just a second. I didn't go, I didn't, I forgot to do a thing. I can go here. When you're marking on um, different kinds of interfacing, mark easier than others. So if you're marking on an interfacing that moves, this move, this interfacing moves around a lot. I mean, <sighs> interfacing this batting moves around a lot. So because of that, now if I've done everything right, then my eight-inch line will be here, and it is, and this line and that line match up. So I'm done. If something doesn't match up. Do it again. If you happen to have I've even gone as far as, because I've, I've got these in like, I've got these in like multiple colors. So if I feel like I'm really screwing up a line, then I'll just give this a quick dab with an iron and then come back. I'll use a different color just on the off chance that I, that I'm iron, 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 iron. And you only, it should only, it, yeah, it should only take a quick blast of the iron, like tsh, 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 tsh. But every now and again, every now and again, you get in a hurry and things shift, move, do whatever they're supposed to do. Okay. So I'm gonna put in a few more pins. Oops, that goes there. I'm gonna put in a few more pins because I happen to know for a fact that this batting loves to shift around once it's under the uh, under the under the the pressure foot presser foot. I can't even call it the right thing. Um, I already know that it does that because I've already done for pillows now in the last two days. So with that in mind, I am going to, I am going to put extra pins in because I already learned my lesson the hard way. Okay, now I'm gonna put two pins there for a reason. Ah, yeah, I'll put two pins there for a reason. Come back to it in a second. I thought I was done. It's easy to get distracted on these projects. Okay, and again, I have the luxury of a knee lift, so I don't have to put in any more pins, and I'm not going to. And again, if things shift a little bit, it's not going to show up. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to start here, because I happen to know, because I paid attention to my own work. These, this is the same fabric, so when you have when you have a section where the top and the bottom are the same fabric, that's if whenever possible, that's a good spot to put your hole because then when you're coming back to seal it up afterwards, every now and again when you're sealing up a hole, the fabrics are, the fabrics are supposed to line up with that, but every now and again one will be a little off and be, show, and be visible from the front. 
So if you have two fabrics that are identical, and I do, try to put your hole there. If you need a, if you need a turn hole, try to put it in that spot because then if you have any issues sealing it up at the end, it'll be less visible. I mean, way less visible. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Just past that pin. Okay, now this is going to be top stitch later, so I don't have to do it super, super tight. Come all the way around. Yeah, I can take that pin out. Sometimes I'll leave the sometimes I'll leave the pin in so I can find my um, starting so I can find my starting spot, especially when I know I've got to leave a hole. So I'm just gonna sew it down all the way around. Honestly, if I wasn't talking, I'd already be done with this pillow. These were these were a surprisingly quick to make. By the way, I don't know if you just noticed that. I just came up onto my I just came up onto my corner and I needed the stitch to hit right in the corner. When you're sewing, don't do this for every single stitch, but if you need your fabric to not move, just press down, press down, and it won't move. Don't do it for every single stitch. You'll muck up your machine, but if you if you need, like, say I want to stop exactly before that pin. There. That way I can, so you can get a little bit of more, a little bit of control for your corners doing that. Don't make it a habit, and if you're, if you have really grippy, I don't know how to describe it. If you're working with high tension or have really, really grippy feed dogs coming up from underneath and you feel too much of a pull, then you won't be able to do it. It'll be really obvious though. So you'll know. I'm overstating. <laughs> I'm overstating, but uh, I, do this, I do this all the time when I'm coming up onto a corner. I do this all the time when I'm coming up onto a corner because sometimes I just, uh, you know, I want my I want my needle to hit right in the center so that I can it gives you a perfect pivot, right? Okay, so this is gonna there. It will pull your it'll pull your fabric forward just the tiniest bit. And if that's all you need, but you really want that stitch. Because when you're pivoting, when you're pivoting, you don't last thing you want to do is screw around with relining up your corners. It doesn't work every time, but sometimes it does. Okay, because I'm using a batting, this is going to be a much softer top than, it's going to be a much softer top than this one was. This one's a little bit more obvious. It's, it's a little bit, the top itself is a little bit more firm. If you've ever, if you've ever um, looked at decorative pillows, you'll notice that some of them are really soft and some of them have a bit of a firmness to them. They're both fine. This is super soft, so it has, it, it just feels, I just like it. I like my pillows. I really liked how this turned out. You could definitely, oh, didn't line that one up. See, I didn't line my corner up properly, so now I gotta do the thing and move it over the tiniest bit. Anyway, anyway, I really liked how this one turned out because the, I've got, this is a super soft batting, so you can barely feel, you can barely feel it. But whatever material you choose to use as this back material, just make sure that you're comfortable with it. I might do a sample. I might do a sample using um, stiffer material, just to see if I even actually care, or if I'm just okay. Once you're once you're coming up to this last corner, give a check every now and again. If things have shifted, you might find that you're going to have a pleat at the hole. So if you think that things have shifted, let's assume. Let's assume. Oh my God, this all shifted. This is shifted, and I'm going to have a pleat at the hole. So give everything a very light. Don't pull, don't, don't reef. Just give everything a very light, just pet it. Just pet it like it's your friend. And then come and finish it. That's if you've stopped and checked. If you've stopped and checked and you've realized that something has shifted and you're gonna have like a little pucker or a pleat at the very end when you're done, then that's how you fix that. I'm a perfect sewer who makes no mistakes. I have no reason to know this. It's just a coincidence, don't you know? So it's never happened to me. And other lies I tell myself. <laughs> okay. Now, 
The size of hole that you leave is based very, very much on your comfort level. I've been leaving a hole just big enough to get like four fingers in, and that seems to be working well for me. Little tiny back stitch. Cut that. Okay, here's where the magic happens. There's no magic. Okay. Now you can either use your scissors or you can use your um, you can use your finger scissors or you can use your rotary cutter. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and I'm actually gonna make a 3 8 inch seam. It's going to the inside of a pillow, so there's not gonna be a lot of anything to to um, be felt once the pillow's done but I really want the edges to be properly um, into the uh, top stitching. We're gonna to be top stitching this, this is easy. Okay, okay. Anyway, I really, I started, I think, I think I've gone back and forth on this. I've, I have really, really, really liked how the bigger pillow worked out. Every single thing that I complained about in the smaller pillow disappears when you're using pieces that are this big. And the funny thing is, is that this, these bigger pieces, I found that they were a lot easier to work with. So now I'm, now I'm going for, I don't know when I think of this to going, oh my God, this is awesome. I want to make a hundred pillows. So I, I went from critic to fangirl about this entire process. Somebody else also mentioned using, somebody else also mentioned using these as um, uh, chair cushions, which would be really just fill them a little bit less. And you're pro, fill them, fill them a little bit less, put a couple of ties on them and you're good to go. And there's a couple of different ways you can add the ties. So I'm kind of a fan of adding the ties after because I found that when it comes to couch cushions, the ties almost always break. It's like, oh, you got a couch cushion and all of a sudden you've got a couch pillow because ties are gone. If you add the ties, if you add the ties after the fact, then let's get this flipped and I'll tell you what I mean. Where's the opening? I can't find my opening. If you can't find your opening, flip it over, run your, there it is. You'll either see it, you'll either see it, or, which I can see it now. You'll either see it or if the thread is too close of a match, you'll just feel thread, no thread, there it is. Okay, we're gonna flip it. We're gonna flip it. Obviously, don't reach into the padding side, reach in between the, reach in between the two layers where the two pretty layer, pretty um, fabrics are facing each other, get in there. Turn it gently, turn it carefully, turn it in any way that makes sense to you. Just try not to stretch the fuck out of the opening because that's already gonna be taking some abuse when you put the stuffing in. Okay. Oh, da, 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 da. I tend to, I tend to flip and flip and flip. Everybody has their own way. They do. So don't, just because you saw, just because you saw me doing it this way, whatever, whatever, like some people, some people leave the opening big enough to shove their whole hand in. That's fine. I leave it big enough for four fingers because I can get four fingers in, both thumbs out, and then just get right to the corners. Now we have one more step before the filling. Because I found out that this is a, now, you, if you know what, if you understand what a ladder stitch is, then you can just fill this guy now. Then you can just fill this and close that opening with a ladder stitch. I don't do ladders. Well, I just don't like hand sewing. So you can iron it if you want to. What I will recommend, you, I will recommend it. I'm going to turn the camera off and go do it in a second. By the way, it took me about, one of the things I was said I was going to do was try and show, one of the things I said I was going to do was to try and show you guys the entire process, including cutting and prepping the fabric, and I skipped that today. So my cutting and prepping fabric time took me about 10 minutes, tops. Um, I mean, you can take days to select your fabric if that's what you want to do, but all I had to do was cut, all I had to do was cut a piece of batting. I cut, I cut my batting at 18 by 18, and I ended up with an extra, so I just left it until I was done. I cut these at 10 inches by 10 inches um, just to, I was, I was breaking down some, I cut these at 10 inches by 10 inches initially, ironed them, and then brought them over. I cut this at 18 by 18, ironed it and brought it over. And now I have, let's double check my measurements, 14, oh, I think I only have a, yeah, 16 inch, I have, I have a 15 and, I have a 16 inch pillow because don't forget the batting is going to add some bulk here, which actually can be measured at about a quarter of an inch. So we're going to come over here again. 
We're gonna come over here again. Ooh, I have, I wasn't sure if I left enough, uh, I wasn't sure if I had enough thread. So I'm gonna turn the camera off for just a second because I have to, oh, my iron is back on. Okay, I'm gonna leave my camera on while I babble from a distance. So all I'm doing over here is I've taken that turn hole and I'm gonna iron it because I'm gonna iron, I'm only ironing where the turn, turn hole is. You can iron the whole thing if that's what you wanna do. Give it a shot of steam if that helps. Turn your iron off because that's what you should do. And come back, <laughs> and come back. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay, so now for me, I am comfortable. I am comfortable wiggling this stuff into, sh into position as I go. If you're not comfortable, then you are gonna want to get this nicely lined up and then give it a quick iron before you, before you come up before you come back to the machine. So I'm starting with the hole. Okay. I'm starting with the hole. Let's get something tiny so you can see what I'm doing. Ah, let's throw stuff on my own lap. Okay, so I'm coming back. The hole starts about here, right? So I am, getting that out of the way. I am gonna start sewing just like one stitch before that hole starts. That's it, just about one stitch. Double check. Yep, about one stitch before the hole starts. I just I just want to reinforce that hole a little bit. And I am putting in a seam. Now for me, I'm putting in a seam that's probably about an eighth of an inch. I'm going as close to this edge as I can comfortably get. That's what's comfortable for me. If it's not comfortable for you, then go in further. Do whatever makes sense. Turn your corner. Keep this stuff flipped into shape. For the most part, this stuff likes to fall into shape on its own. I've got this finger here. This finger here, I'm pushing down and forward at the same time, and I'm hopefully pushing down in a way that's gonna get it moving into the machine. If it doesn't go, then I'll just manually forward my stitches. Okay, take your time. This is just a reinforcing all around the top. It's not 100% it's not necessary, especially if you plan on doing a ladder stitch. I'm not doing a ladder stitch. I'm gonna come back, once I've got this stuffed, I'm gonna come back and sew that shut from the outside, which means that this, going all the way around, is just gonna make it look nice. It's gonna make it look intentional, and it's gonna add to the effect, and you'll see what I mean. If you guys have ever gotten something where everything is fine except for that one section where they've sewn it shut, well, this will help you hide that section where it's been sewn shut, and it'll also reinforce, it'll also reinforce the seam of the pillow. So you're getting two goals at the same time. And remember your, your power pedal, your foot pedal on a sewing machine is like a gas pedal. Uh, unless, you have, unless you have a particular brand of machine that doesn't do this, every machine is speed controlled by how hard you push down the pedal. Just because you can go fast doesn't mean you should. So this is a gift for the wife. I'm going to be careful. And again, if you need to, if you need, if, if your machine is hanging up on these corners, bring it up, lift your foot, bring it ever so slightly forward, bring it up. Obviously, if you're doing it one hand, you just, you're just gonna bring it forward the time. Just bring your foot up enough to let you push the fabric forward the tiniest little bit and use the arm at the end if that's what you need to do. And then once your, once your foot starts to level out, it'll start going forward properly. I'm in love with that trick, so I like to talk about it as much as I can. Okay, so we're getting almost done. And again, if I was if I was if I was just doing it instead of like making a point of describing every step and taking my time to show you guys, I'd probably be already done and halfway into stuffing this monster. So yes, this will be a pillow that you cannot come back. Well, you can wash these kind of pillows. These kind of pillows are small enough that you can wash them if you absolutely have to. Just uh Wash them in the gentle cycle. Uh, put them in for a second spin if you can, and then lay them out somewhere. Lay, fluff them up as best you can. You can throw them in a pillow. You can throw them in the, in the dryer for a few minutes, just to fluff them up. Mind you, I like to do it differently. I like to uh, when when I'm when I'm using these kind of pillows, I will put them in the wash on a gentle cycle, get them cleaned up as best I can. Obviously, get them washed. And then I will put them back in for a spin cycle. And then I will 
lay them out somewhere to dry. Hopefully, ideally somewhere very, very sunny on a slightly breezy day so that they will dry really, really well. And then once I'm pretty sure, once I'm pretty sure that they're almost dry or dry, it doesn't really matter, I will throw them in the dryer with something heavy like a pair of jeans. A dr one, of the, one of those dryer balls, something, something that will smack away at it and uh, and um, help fluff it back up. Mind you, I tend to do it before and after. I'll throw, I'll throw it in a. Um, once they're once they're washed, I will throw them in a, in the dryer on like a uh, fluff cycle. With ideally with something that will thump against them a little bit, or do whatever. And then I'll dry them, and then I'll throw them back in again. But good news is, is that ideally, like for me, I get to, for me I get to be lazy because if I have a problem, I can just take out the stuffing, make it. I can, I can take out the stuffing and then use that on my next pillow and just change them out. So, if you happen to have a stash of fabric, then you can be really generous with yourself about about what you're doing, but we don't have too many problems, and it's funny because we have two dogs. I have no, I, I don't have too many problems keeping pillows washed up, but it's all, it's just all about getting them dry without them going musty, so. Wash them, wash them, give them an extra spin, throw them in the dryer fluff cycle for a few minutes to try and, to fluff them up as best you can. Okay, there's the, op there's the other, op there's the other end of the opening, so I'm gonna go to just past this spot, this will reinforce, okay, okay, what this does is when you've got a fabric that you flipped over and you're digging and digging and digging and because you're going to be stuffing this, all that activity could make this hole start stretching open. It could just start peeling back the, um, the, th the, the stitches. Got a couple more to do. One, two, three. Okay. I'm going to get this one a little back stitch. Again, to over, again, to over explain the thing, look, I've done... I've done a matching thread, the front and the back matches. So when I come back to seal this, that thread, that's not really going to be visible. So also, that's another reason for picking a part of the, a part of it that you're not too concerned about. Okay. Back over here. Back over here. So. The hole. Let's talk about the hole for a second. Let's give you guys a little, a little professional advice. Okay, now this hole does, is, doesn't look like it matches up, but it actually does because the top part of this hole has got a layer of batting in there, so it's going to be adding pressure to try and push it out of place. But once you grab it and pull it into the place, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. So don't let that, don't let that, if you think something didn't go right, check it now before you put the stuffing in because if you have to take out all the stuffing to fix something you think is a problem, but yeah, like this, this, this looks like it's a problem. Then you go like that and it's like, that's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. It's going to sew up just fine. There's no pleat. Um, I'm going to cut off this thread because I'm not going to think about it later. Okay. And now I got to stuff this thing. <sighs> this is going to, now this, this one here, Lisa has, this is, this is memory. This is chunks of memory foam that Lisa had from a pillow that she already had and really, really liked. So I am going to co-opt her memory foam and fill this one with the memory foam. So let's just see. Regular regular batting is pretty easy. This this is going to be this is going to be fine. I just don't know how easy this is going to be. I think I may not have left a big enough hole for this stuff, but we'll find out. Oh my god, this is going to be a mess.
Okay, and now you have a decision to make. If you are gonna come back with a needle and thread and hand sew this, then you can make your pillow, then you can stuff your pillow to its maximum right now. I'm fucking lazy. I am gonna be stuffing this guy into the sewing machine and doing this last part by machine. So what I'm doing is I'm basically doing my best to overstuff everything else a little bit. I'm getting all this nasty stuff cleaned up. This by the way is um, memory foam chunks. So I'm doing my best to overstuff everything else and I'll show you how this is done because this is the way I'm gonna do it. One last little handful and we're done. This, okay, the static that you're seeing here has almost as much to do with the fact that it's winter time here. The air is really dry and life is staticky. So this may not have been the best time. I didn't have this problem when I was using regular cotton batting, but the memory foam seems to be wanting to be all staticky. So then you get, okay, super dry condition, storing it in a plastic bag. Uh, <laughs> This normally, this normally won't be a problem. It's not really a problem. It's just a little extra mess to clean up. And again, I have my handy dandy, uh, I have my handy dandy, uh, this guy, fabric roller. Sticky dude. Okay, so if you are going to be lazy and stuff it back into the machine, then overstuff, the, overstuff your project. Clean this, clean this up as best you can. Clean this section up because once you sew this down, it's going to be a process if you have any leftover fibers sticking out. Yeah, I'm not even on camera. Let's, let's show you guys the sewing machine. This is, this is going to be, okay, you guys aren't even going to see anything, but I'm just going to talk you through it anyway. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold this to the best of your ability. Pin it if you need to. Pin the crap out of it if you need to. I am going to get in here. This is actually a little bit easier than it was, what it was. The, my, the other two pillows that I showed you, I just used regular batting for. This is actually a little bit easier because everything's easier to stick out of the way. Okay, so you're going to line everything. You're going to line up your uh, stuff. Like I said, pin it if you had to. Get back onto that original sew line that you did. Do back stitch, please. And then just close the hole. Once you get your first few stitches in, it's a little bit easier to uh, work with it. Put a seam in it. I mean, put a seam in it, put a stitch in it there and just keep going. Close that hole. Everybody has their own uh, things that they're willing to do and not do. I hate hand sewing, so I try to avoid it like the plague. And voila. The hole is closed. I just got to trim off my fabrics. Do, 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 do. I have done that consistently. Oh my God, I need to stop doing that. Every time I turn the camera, I go do 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 do. Every time I do anything. Okay. 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 And then you just, in the case of this pillow, you just work. Now, because this is a uh, nice loose batting, you just gotta go into your corners a little bit and you're good to go. If this, if this, I should have done the regular batting because what you do is you just come in here with your finger, you push, and then you grab and just pull it backwards and then fill that hole back up and then you're done. This is, this, this uh, memory foam was stored in a, memory foam once it's been pressed down takes a while to pop back up. So as this pops back up, this is gonna fill back out a little bit. It will continue to fill back out a bit. If, you, if you're using memory foam that's been stored in any environment where it's been compressed. So we're just going to take our lint roller and see, I called it a fabric roller. And we're just going to go over here, take off the really worst of it, the really worst of it. And I am going to trick the little woman, the little lady. I'm going to trick my, I'm not going to trick my wife. I'm just going to go throw, I'm just going to go throw it on her, uh, on her spot. Everybody has their spot, right? I'm gonna go throw this on her spot and see if she even notices right away. She'll notice, but will she notice as soon as she comes in or will she have to find it? Again, this is not the fault of the lint roller. This is the fault of way too much static in the world right now. 
I've been literally, you ever, you ever get so static that you hear that, that you could, that you can hear the zap, the little crack. Yeah, it's been that dry in the house. Lint rollers are amazing. They really are. They're amazeballs. Okay. Take the time, take the time. By the way, if you have pillows that are doing this, you can solve this problem. If you have if you have pillows or something that's really staticky, you can solve the problem by putting a damp washcloth. Put your pillow, a damp washcloth, and a dryer sheet in the wash in the dryer. Tumble them around for about 15, 20 minutes, if that, and you will get most of this most of the static off and any residual lint and whatnot that you can't get up. Because sometimes lint just, just just decides to be like super there. Yeah, I'll put so, I'll put something like this in the dryer um, with a dryer sheet. The damp cloth is just so that the dryer stuff can get on things. I don't know how to describe it. Not soaking wet, just a little tiny, just a little damp, a little damp washcloth. Damp like damp damp like your towel after a shower. Damp like that. Nothing 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 over the top. Anyway, that's it. My camera was pointing really badly, I think, for a lot of this video, but that's okay. So that's it. That is the wife's pillow. I will probably go make her. I'm, I'm not going to make her another one just yet. We have a different design that we want to play around with, and we don't have enough batting. So she now has her own little pillow, and she'll probably steal that one too. Oh, look at that. They actually look really good together. Look at that. I'm just gonna knock the camera everywhere, but that's okay. There, there, we have, I'm putting that in her spot. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, repeat. <laughs> now, I really, wanted, I really wanted to show you guys this because once this gets, but once this is bigger, and once I, once, I did the first, once I did the first one on batting, it's like, Pillows are awesome, but yeah, if you wanted if you wanted to do this as a couch cushion, just put in less batting, put in a little less batting, and then put just put ties on each corner, and you're good to go. I mind this could even make a good couch cushion. I mean chair cushion. You know those chair cushions. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna stop playing with this and go put it there, put it where my wife can find it, and I will talk to you guys later. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things. You know I'm trying to take over the world. I need your help to do that, and in the meantime, I will see you guys later. Bye.